House hacking a single family home. What's going on, everybody? It's Jeff Trevarthen, Jeff the Mortgage Pro. Thanks so much for joining me today. And we're talking about how to house hack a single family home today. This is kind of a cool topic, and I really love talking about things like investment properties and just little tricks and things you can do to your different uh, types of investments that people are doing out there. But first, if you get a chance, if you like this video and like the information I'm putting out on this particular video, please make sure you hit the like button. And then if you like my stuff that you've seen on other videos of my channel, if you could go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the little bell next to it, and that'll get you to uh, be alerted when I put out my videos, usually every Tuesday and Thursday and you can get any updated information you need on my channel, Jeff the Mortgage Pro going forward. So again, thanks so much for being a subscriber. All right, let's look at house hacking a single family rental today. And there's a bunch of strategies that I come up with. We can talk about each one of them here, but what is house hacking to begin with? Like this is a, a term you've seen thrown around. Uh, if you've watched any shorts or reels or anything like that over the last couple of years, you know that people are talking about house, house hacking. And I think it sounds really cool <laughs> to begin with, but house hacking quite simply, is just finding a way to generate income from your home. So, you know, there's some definitely some obvious uh, house hacking examples, like if you're going to be buying a duplex and you live in one side and you rent the other side of the property or buy a triplex or a fourplex. Those are all examples of, you know, easy types of ways to explain house hacking. Oh, I'm going to live in one unit. And I'm going to rent the other three units out. OK, that's easier said, and, you know, easier to do when you have multiple units on a property. But what if you just had a single family house? Like what things can you do in order to help yourself generate income? So I came up with a list for you. Okay. The first one here is you could rent out your extra bedrooms long-term. So let's say, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you're single or if you have a family, if you have like a four bedroom house, let's say, and you have, uh, let's say you're single and you live in one of the rooms, there's three other bedrooms that you could actually rent out long-term. So you could get people to pay you on a monthly basis you know, whether it be six months or a year that could come and live in your property. Now you got to be careful with some of this stuff. Like, do you want the, you know, it depends on it, what type of people you want in there. You know, do you want men or women in your property? You know, whatever the different types of distinctions you have in there, make sure you're careful about who you're going to rent, rent your property out to. But this is definitely a way that, uh, you know, an easy way that people can generate income from their, uh, from their single family home, depending on the number of bedrooms you have. The second one, that you could do is rent out your extra bedrooms in the short or medium term. So I have a friend who actually rents her room out to traveling nurses via Airbnb. And sometimes they'll come and stay for three to six months at a time. They'll be there. She gets to know them. It's really cool. She gets paid to do this. And I'm just like, man, that's a great idea. I never even thought about that. But short term to medium term rentals as well. Okay. If you did Airbnb, maybe you have, you know, maybe you're next to a, a cool location or something and people need to come in and stay. They can come and stay in one of those bedrooms for the short term, just a day or a couple days. If they need to, you could charge higher prices that way, or they could turn, you know, you could rent it out into the medium term. So different ideas you could do um, when renting out your, just your different bedrooms that you have. You could do the long-term rental strategy, like the strategy number one, or you could do the short medium term strategy, like the strategy number two here. Strategy number three is rent out the whole house very via Airbnb when you're away on vacation. So let's say every year you want to take a trip to Hawaii or a trip to the Bahamas and you book it for two weeks. Well, when you're two weeks away and you're, you know, spending on travel expenses and hotels and all that fun stuff, nobody is paying for your home at the time that you're gone for the most part, right? You're still paying the mortgage payment. So you still have all the expenses and responsibility of owning your home, but why not rent it out when you're gone for those two weeks? Hey, I know I'm going to be gone from this week to this week. Why don't I get on Airbnb and rent it out during those two weeks while I'm gone? So rent out your whole stinking house at this time when you are away on vacation. So that's strategy number three. Strategy number four is to convert your garage to a bedroom. So this is another thing that um, I've seen popular. I have another friend who, who's done this uh, in San Jose where there's a shortage of housing. And in, in this particular instance, they converted the garage into a bedroom and they can rent that out, whether it's short term, medium term or long term. So maybe he put a little kitchenette in there. It's like, well, that's a really good idea. You know, you can you can easily do something like that to convert your garage into a um, a rental type of a unit. Is that going to be some expense to you? Most likely, yes. You're going to have to spend a little bit of money converting that garage into an actual 
uh, hospitable place to, to stay or to live, okay? So that's strategy number four. Strategy number five is what if you built an ADU on your property, okay? What's an ADU? It's an accessory dwelling unit or like a granny unit is another uh, common term that you've heard when you're buying, uh, when you have an ADU on your property. So if you build an ADU, um, you can rent it out again. You can rent it out short term. You can rent it out medium term. You can rent it out long term. Um, there's lots of places in, across the United States where there's shortages of housing and go, local governments are encouraging people to build these small little living units, whether it's a studio or a one bedroom. Um, and they have a bathroom in there and there as a kitchenette in there and you can actually rent those properties out. And again, to do this, it might be some expense to do it in the beginning, but at the end of the day, that might be a way for you to generate some extra revenue coming in to help you offset your mortgage payment every single month. Okay. All right. I've got two bonus strategies for you and they're kind of even more of a hacky way to type of do things. The bonus strategy number one here is to provide some rental space on your property. So let's say your property is big enough and you're living there and you're not using all of the space on there. Let, let, let's say you have extra driveway space or rent out your driveway. Okay. Let somebody put their boat there or their RV there or their trailer there and you can rent it out on a monthly basis, whether it be a, you know, a couple hundred bucks or whatever it might be. That might be an idea for you to generate some extra money from your property just by renting out some space on your property to somebody else that might need that. Okay. So that's bonus strategy number one. And both strategy Strategy number two is this. What if you had an ADU and what if you actually lived in your ADU because you could, because maybe you're single or just, you know, just two people that live there, you could live in your ADU and rent out your whole house. So for the most part, you probably can cover your mortgage payment in a lot of instances when you rent out your whole house and you still get the benefit of living in the property, all the tax benefits associated with the property, having a primary residence, uh, you know, because you own the property, but you're also getting uh, rental income coming in every single month from people who are living in your house while you're living in the ADU. So that's house hacking bonus strategy number two. Okay. If you guys enjoyed this, please let me know. I would love to chat with you more about any other different ideas. What did I miss? Is there any other house hacking strategies that you have out there? I want to put my calendar link down below in the description and in the comments section. And if you would like to chat with me about how you're house hacking, I'd love to hear some different examples out there from the, from the listeners and the watchers of this video. So please hit me up and let's learn how to do some more house hacking type of stuff. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next show. Have a good one. Bye.